What's up guys, Charles from Tree Tanks Dev, welcome to today's video. And if you're wondering why this video aspect looks slightly different, it's because I'm shooting in DCI 4K using my eight-year-old DJI Osmo and it still works great, pretty cool. 200 bucks, I bought this secondhand, all-in-one camera stabilizer. You're gonna get really nice, stable footage. You can shoot in D-Log and it can shoot DCI 4K. So pretty cool for 200 bucks, guys. So coming back to today's video, this is a list which I compiled on my own. So basically there might be other cameras that can also do, they're not in this list probably, but this is what I could think of the most popular 10 cameras in the market right now which costs under 1000 US dollars body only and can shoot in full HD 120 frames per second. So we're going to start at number 10, which is the cheapest, which is the Sony A6100. This comes in body only according to amazon.com at about 715 US dollars. 2019 24.2 megapixels camera can shoot 4K 30, 1080p 120. This is practically the same as the rest of the Sony 6000 lineup like the Sony A63, A64, A65, A66. Only difference is that this has no S-Log and this has no IBIS as well. Same like the A63 and the A6400. No IBIS but still using the new autofocus system which covers 425 AF points across the camera, across the, of, across the screen. So you're gonna get really, really good fast autofocusing with the eye detection and stuff. Only difference is, like I said, no S-Log. Not really a bummer, really, really cheap, well worth the money camera. Coming in number nine is a Canon camera. Point and shoot, launched back in 2019, the G7X Mark III. This only costs about 750 US dollars. It has a 180 degree tilt up screen, 20 megapixels, can shoot 4K 30 and 1080p 120. The only difference, there is a catch. 1080p 120 on this camera has no autofocus or no audio. So that is practically not really usable unless you're doing cinematic filming of uh, in slow motion, then it would be more practical. But other than that, this doesn't seem like a really worth it option in my opinion. So coming in number eight is a Micro Four Thirds 20.3 megapixels camera, which is a really popular, well-rounded, cheap camera to use in the market, which is the Panasonic G95. So this camera was launched in 2019, has a fully articulating screen, can shoot 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 120 frames per second. It has IBIS as well. And coming from a Micro Four Thirds system, there is a wide variety of lenses available. I mean, it may not be as good as the rest of the cameras in low lighting situations, but if you get a wide aperture lens like the Sigma 16mm f1.4, I think it should be perfectly fine. So this camera comes in at about USD 840 bucks with the kit lens because on Amazon, they don't have the option body only. But with the kit lens, the 12 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6 already costs as cheap as USD 840 bucks. Then coming in at number seven is a 32.5 megapixels camera from Canon launched back in 2019. This will be the highest resolution camera among all the 10 in this list today. This is the Canon M6 Mark II. So we can shoot 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 120. Uh, the only difference is that this camera has no EVF. The EVF actually comes separately or maybe some shops they give it to you for free. This is a 180 degree tilt up screen for vlogging purposes. And I really haven't tried out any of the Canon M series cameras yet, but I do hear they're pretty good in terms of the dual pixel autofocus and stuff. Well worth the money at 850 bucks on this Canon M6 Mark II. Okay, coming in at number six is a camera that I already have and I absolutely love it, the Nikon Z50. This is a new 2019 Nikon Z lens, an APS-C version of course, but this is one of the best cameras and I highly recommend using this camera. It can shoot 4K 30, it can shoot 1080p 20, it has really good color science. If you are a vlogger, you get a 180 degree tilt down screen it has great ergonomics. The only downside about this Nikon Z50 is the lack of lenses available. Majority of the Nikkor Z lenses are for the Nikon full-frame cameras such as the Nikon Z6, the Nikon Z7, and right now the Nikon Z5. 
in terms of the Nikon Z50, the APS-C version, they call it the DX lenses. There only is the kit lens, which is the 16 to 50 f3.5 to 5.6, or another zoom lens, which is a 50 to 200 millimeters or something like that. So not really a lot of lenses available for the Nikon Z50. But if you don't mind splashing out a little bit of money to get the FX full frame lenses to use on your Nikon Z50, then that should be no problem. But really good worth the money camera in my opinion this Nikon Z50 and then coming in number five and number four are two pretty similar cameras and number five would be the Sony a6300 which is a 2016 24.2 megapixels camera and then that number four is the Sony a6400 which is also a 24.2 megapixel camera but launched in 2019 so this a6400 has a newer updated autofocus system and a faster processor and stuff it has an 180 degree tilt up screen unlike the a63 and according to amazon right now they're exactly the same price coming in at us dollars 898 bucks body only so if you have to choose between the two the a6400 which is newer faster and better would definitely be the obvious choice over the a6300 both of them can shoot 4k 30 and also 1080p 120 frames per second and coming in at number three is a really popular aps -E camera called the fujifilm xc30 this is one of the best cameras for its value in the market right now and it comes in at about 899 bucks body only it can shoot 4k 30 it can shoot 1080p 120 it has a tilt up lcd screen and it has a backside illuminated cmos sensor to give you a really good dynamic range pretty good camera really well worth the money i was looking at the specs and i was looking at the reviews really really good cheap aps-e camera I might consider buying this Fujifilm X-T30. I am still weighing the options against the Fujifilm X-T3, which comes in at number two. So X-T3, ever since the X-T4 was launched recently, the X-T3, which is a 2019 camera's prices have dropped by about four to 500 bucks, making it a really, really good, well worth the money camera. It can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, guys, in 10 bit 420. It can also shoot in 10 bit 422 for an APS-C camera. If you do use external recording, the downside is it has no IBIS in this camera like the X-T4, but for 999 bucks for a 26 megapixel camera with great video specs being an APS-C, well worth the money. I have the Panasonic G9 also and shoot 4K 60, 10 bit 422 internal and stuff. Uh, with hybrid log gamma, but that is a micro four thirds system. But the G9 does have six and a half stops of IBIS, which is really, really good. So I'm still considering whether I should take out the money for the X-T3 when I already have the Panasonic G9, or should I just go for the X-T30, a cheaper alternative of the X-T3. And coming in the number one, guys, is the same price, 999 bucks, same as the Fujifilm X-T3, is the Olympus omd e m5 mark iii we all know that olympus is no longer around but this camera is a really good high-end camera 4k 30 frames per second 1080p 120 has five axis of in-body image stabilization 2019 camera and has 20 megapixels maybe not so good uh, for photography because only 20 megapixels and also a micro four thirds system so not really good in low light but basically it still falls within this list of being able to shoot 1080p 120 and cost below a thousand US dollars body only. So thanks guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button, the like button and the notifications button. And of course, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section, what you think is the most worded camera among all 10 that I just mentioned. Or even if you find some cameras which are not in this list, you can let me know and then I can add on those cameras to this list. Alright guys, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.